right, so let's do an intro. Welcome to another Reactions video. So for this one, I've gotten so many requests. Actually, the most requests that I've had is for a Reactions to Basses. So I brought in the most famous tenor in the world, Christian Van Horn. <laughs> no, of course he's a bass and he's one of the best in the business. Thanks for joining me, brother. My pleasure, man. We even go way back. We went to school together. We went to school at Yale, Yale, some of them call it. And, uh, Yale University. Yale University. And uh, I broke out of there, actually. Yeah, yeah, you left early. I left early. You're like, oh, I don't need another degree. Yeah, I, uh, or the first. <laughs> We've now known each other for 20 years. 20 plus? 20 plus. 20 plus years, yikes. and uh, yeah, yikes. It's funny how I'm the only one who went gray. Yeah. <laughs> Want to put our head, show, show our heads, put our heads down. No, so no, no. And I'm so happy to invite Christian on to our reactions video on basses. Let's get started. I feel like I should do that again in a classier way because I... I, I like it was you, man. It was good. You're not sweating, though. I would have started sweating in the middle of that. Christian actually has an amazing podcast that I've only listened to once when he mentioned me. And uh, so I can tell you it's great. So right after this, we're actually going to record an episode of the CBH podcast. And you can find that on CBH podcast on all streaming sites. He's the bomb. He's the best. If you like opera, then you would love his podcast. <laughs> that sounds so lame. <laughs> Christian's gonna be I'll reacting and see if he can uh, guess this, who it is in less than three seconds. Let's go. CIP. There you go. Okay. <laughs> now you can look. <laughs> we got a handsome bastard. All right. He's like handsome and lurch. There was a sadness in that sound. It, it began, it, it was like Hans Hotter. It, it began sad and it drew you in. Nobody did it like him. No push either, man. It's just beauty. He was my inspiration for Don Giovanni because when I sang Don Giovanni, you know, I'm a full-throated bass baritone. So I didn't have all that light stuff and so I used, I used him as my model because yeah. he had the big and the small and I was trying to like Negotiate no, I, that. I think we got to talk about this. In my head, the ideal was Dmitry Vodostovsky. I was like, that's Don Giovanni to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the full throated, but also had all the little pini sinis that you, that you needed him. And I didn't have that. And so I went to CAP because this was a big voice guy. I was like, yeah, okay, you don't have to fit into this mold. You do your version. And, and I think watching him let me know that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it somehow gives you the confidence to just be yourself in a way. You're like, this, this can and was done. It's yeah. Done. See? Historically correct. But then when I bring it up with conductors, why well, I listen to Brusson sing it this way, they're like, yes, but we do we like these. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Before I, before yeah. I ever, the first time in the, in the Zitz Pro, we started the Dei Vieni, and, and as the maestro began the, the pizzicato, he turns to me and he goes, it's already too loud. And <laughs> sung one note, it's already too loud. He was right. He was, right. He was, right. He was completely right. <laughs> the breath. It's oh, already, I hear the breath. Oh, already too loud. The inhale. <laughs> okay, that's, that's just... Few people could slide into this the way he does this. So smooth. Like a, like a lyric baritone on this song. Well. <laughs> See, he lived out his days in Florida, South Florida. Really? And people would beg him to teach and he wouldn't teach. And people begged him to direct and he wouldn't direct. He just wanted to acquire the I kind of respected that. Like, I, I hope someday I can do the vanish again. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke screen. Yeah. <laughs> Christian's gone. Look at his face. This is, this is somebody who had no fear in what he was doing. Like he wrote it. I love that. That's changing the great. vowel above, changing the vowel, and something elongated above the staff. That's like yeah. where, but where, he never, where good becomes great. He never lost his jaw space on that D. He didn't go D, it's a D. But he let his vibrato be what it was. It didn't yeah. matter what his age was. If, it's, if his vibrato started to get wide, he didn't. He just put it into the character. Yeah. That's why he sang until he was 68. That was nice. He's got that, that like Italian movie star hair. Yeah. 
just so smooth. It's like it, everything feels like middle voice. You know what, what happens when you listen to Italian singers is you realize that all the things they used to tell us in diction class are bullshit. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and preach, when, preach. When you're listening to these monster shadow bells he puts at the end of yeah. phrases, you're like, it's gorgeous, it's yeah. glorious. Why wouldn't you yeah. do it like this? Absolutely. It's like they want you to be perfect in a small room. Right. With your perfect diction in a very small room, and then you get in the big room and you can't hear it. My, my teacher, Richard Cross, who you studied with too for a while, he said, listen to everybody. If you like it, steal it. There's a reason it worked. Yeah. You know, there was no shame. Yeah. And I, I devoured recordings. I don't know, like you, but I I didn't listen to one Elegy Mind Mama. I listened to 25 Elegy yeah. Mind until I heard what yeah. I wanted, then I took it all. It Let, listen to this. He's going to yeah, go okay. Pianissimo. Okay. Hang on. This last E natural goes from Pianissimo to a huge forte. It's not reading the score. But this isn't actually piano. This is piano. Uh, this is well, mezzo forte with a piano intention. Yeah, right, really right, right. Here we go. Could have held that three seconds longer, but it's a live show. And recordings are gilded. You know, like yeah. studio recordings are gilded. This is reality. You hear that sadness in the voice? Christian, when we listen to CIP, what do you hear, what do you feel that moves you and, and creates that sort of feeling? So simple, I got it for you. It, you never hear a gear shift. Mm. There's no gear shift in his sound, so from bottom to top, and I know there's a gear shift going on inside, yeah. and I both yeah, yeah. know that yeah. the space changed, but for the listener, you hear a perfectly lined up voice, top to bottom, one continuous thing. Smooth elegance. His technique was hiding the fact that there was technique. Mm, that's, isn't that the best? Isn't that the best kind? I think that's what we're all shooting yeah, for. Yeah, you know? that is the goal, right? I don't, I don't want you to hear the huge gear shift. And we, we know plenty of singers that have a huge gear shift, and it's still exciting. But when you don't yeah. hear it, you go, oh, yeah. that's superhuman. That's class. That's class. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Sam Raymond. <laughs> it's Memphis stuff like, come on, guys, make it hard. Give me a challenge. <laughs> I've worn those pants. Who wore it better? We won't get into that. He, like wore, he wore the makeup on his chest better. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sam. Sam's great. He's buddies with both of us. No, I mean, Sam made this production famous. I, I only did it one time, and I did it at the Met. And before Sam, was there. And, and before Sam did it at the Met, he did this production in about 12 different places. He had a little warm-up. And I did it with Fabiano, who was sitting right there. This is a little slow for me. I, I think I would have died in the middle of this tempo, but Sam could do almost anything. Sam was um, our god because there was no more recorded bass in history. And, and back in the old days, when I would go to Tower Records and, and look at what CD I was going to buy, yeah. it was 20 to 1 Sam over any other bass. And so I've got everything. Yeah. The first thing I ever heard was Sam Raimi singing Rossini arias, and I thought, I am a total fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that he's in all the European recordings, too. Oh. You know? Cause and and he wasn't time. afraid to, he didn't need to be title character. Sam also yeah. sang, like, the third roll down. Like, he wasn't afraid of that. Yeah. You know, when you're a star like this, you think it's either you on the yeah. cover or nothing. Here we go. If there was a moment a to hang on to a note, yeah. he hung on to it not 10% longer than anybody had before, 25% longer than him. If it was a low note, it was lower. You know, whatever it was, it was to the extreme because he had that kind of, it was a flawless technique. Sam knew what he was. Sam didn't mess around in German repertoire. Mm. Sam, he, he rolled in as a, the first time he ever sang at the Met, he was 40. He was already 40. I mean, he had been a city opera guy. And so Sam had been trained and had like earned it. He wasn't like all of a sudden famous. Yeah, he, he, had, he was a 20 year overnight success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so when he came in, and it was, I think it was Ario Dante or some, some handle, Rinaldo or something like that, 
the, there was a new king in town. He in paid his five dues. notes. There was a new king in town. Yeah. And, it was, and then he sang there for twenty five more years. Yeah. Starting at forty, he went on yeah. twenty five more years. And, uh, Sam was a, a badass. I mean, he he kind of reinvented the word badass. You know, just like yeah. He did it the way nobody had done it before, and he set this new bar that made, frankly, basses more important. You know, mm-hmm. for, forever, basses were, if basses sang Handel or Rossini, they were buffo. Yeah. And then Sam did it, and he and sang it like, no perfect, like Larry Brownlee kind of color, yeah. tour, fire yeah. and fire. You go, oh my God, that's, yeah. that's the bar? Yeah, he, he moved, it gave us he, something to, to strive for. Yeah, it's rare that a singer single handedly moves the bar up. I never wanted to, I never thought, oh, I need to sing low like Sam, or I need to sing high like Sam. That wasn't it. I wanted to sing precise like Sam. Mm. It was like a machine gun coloratura. And you go, it's clearly possible. It's clearly yeah. possible, the big boy. Stop, stop your excuses. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's what I got to with Sam. I love that. Yeah. Okay, I don't think I've ever heard of his French repertoire. I mean, his Don Giovanni was famous, of course. Listen to the French, come on! Yeah. Is he singing in a cafeteria? <laughs> yeah, they're eating their pizza. <laughs> There's judges. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is, this is, I think is from a movie. Yeah, well, that's what he was a movie star. Yeah. Now, if you play George London, and you played Hans Hunter, it's right in this vein. It's that, again, it's a sadness. There's a sadness in the sound that comes from below. It's not flat. The approach is just always slightly stroked upwards. And that gives you that sadness. Approaching the note from from that side of things to me, it gives me, it gives me such a rush when I hear it done well. Yeah, you know that, oh, that's where that, you hear Maria Callas do it, or, yeah. or Renee Fleming. The note comes from Way below, you know. Yeah. Just, well, that's open throat, you know. Oh my God! Like, shape, give me a, open give me a, throat singing. Give me a chill. Yeah. Oh, because, you know, my my teacher was wonderful, and he very early on I went to sing a high note, and he, and he goes, "Here's what you're doing." Pause for a second. He he says, um, "Here's what you're doing." This was early days with Rich Richard, and he took a book, and there was a shelf, and he and he just throws it like this, like straight at the shelf. And it hits the shelf and bounces off and hits the floor. He says, right now, that's how you're singing that high note. You're just kind of throwing it at it. And then yeah. he goes, this is how you do it. And he walks over and he places oh, the book. Oh, bravo, he, Richard! He places the book softly on the on the top of that. He says, this is how you do that. Yes, you're from below. And then you place. Yeah. And that was the difference between swoop and yeah. the lift. Yeah. And I think I think I wanted to move towards the lift. Yeah. All I knew was to throw it at it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the voice is a ball on a, on a water fountain. Keep that oh, ball floating yeah. there. Yeah. This is your support. And that kind of visual stuff worked for me. Go for it. I'm not that kind of bass. I wish he didn't straight tone this. I don't think he could, I don't think he could move it. <laughs> See, you can start it and go, as soon as you bounce, it, bouncing your vibrato. You bounce your vibrato on the note. That's when I bounce that note, and all of a sudden the vibrato is just there without meaning to. Technique. Look at you, man. Look at you. <laughs> well done. Thanks, bro. Okay. Sorry, right. I feel embarrassed I said that to you. <laughs> no, no, I don't sing low notes. Oh, uh, well. The technique no. is really. It's for you. A little gift for your Corvassier Sam, bag. Sam Raimi told me you're a bass. You don't get paid for low notes. We assume low notes. Mm-hmm. You get mm-hmm. paid for high notes. Because mm-hmm. you're not supposed to have those. And I was like, That's my head exploded in that moment. I was yeah. like, right. When you hear a yeah. little color tour soprano and she's got all the fireworks shit, yeah. I assume fireworks shit. Yeah. But can she sing this huge line? Yeah. If she's got that too, now no, we're talking. All right, here we go. Ah. <laughs> That's like a very, very good bass baritone. <laughs> Almost bass. <laughs> you know, the most intimidating, intimidating part about this is singing French in France. Yeah, of course. Of course. Because I'm not going to fool anybody there that I'm yeah. French. I'm, it's just not going to happen. It, okay, okay. Let's, let's discuss. The, the reviewer, who is uh, shit, um, has to tell everybody how great it was, if only he had, his mm-hmm. French was better. But even if my French was absolutely pristine, which is not and never will be, but even if it was pristine, 
you will still know that I'm not native. It's impossible. A German singer can't come to America, sing in English, and for you to not hear it, even if their English is perfect, you know they're not from here. And it's the same thing. So I don't, I don't try to fool anybody. If you've yeah. understood the word, I have communicated. Yeah. If you're not happy with my French, I'm sure there's somebody here who could do it. Why don't you find yeah, that? Yeah, great singing. I love this. All right, by the way. Dude. That was fun. I got pianos. Nice. I got pianos. First one I've ever heard of. <laughs> this was my first thing out of COVID. Ah, oh, that was nice. So we had no audience. It was just streaming. We built the whole show. And this was Alexander Neath. God bless him. This was Alexander Neath putting money in the pockets of artists. Because he could. He knew full well we would never see an audience. And so he says, I want to build a show. Will you come to Paris and build a show? I, said, oh, I can't. I'm sorry. This is too good not to listen to. This is Ben Bernheim. I'm the only Mephisto he's ever had. And we got three more together. You guys sing. I wish I was singing Battle Tower. We're going to record um, the Berlioz on a small together. This used to scare the hell out of me. Yeah. I sing sharp, which is the professional side of the pitch for all you out there. If you're going to be anything, be sharp. The professional. You're professionally sharp. Yeah, yeah. If you're flat, yeah, I, got, I judge. This would make pop. In Paris? Mm -mm. Yeah, Chicago. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. That was famous. We, yeah, we get to be really good buddies. Wait, they're hooping? Yeah, uh, obviously. Well, that was the thing time. is that is that you know Faust was trying to to be what he wasn't. He wanted to be an athlete. He wanted to be a great athlete. And so the Faust ghosts come in and help him get these balls. Oh, you can tell they're dancers. <laughs> dancers? I mean, forget the way they know when they're shooting. I mean, I'm like, come on, where's the oh technique? My God. Well, you could just tell they weren't American. Yeah, well, before that, <laughs> you're a baller. You know, I hope, man. <laughs> He's got the ball from half. That one swallowed back on me. I know what I did there. Is it hard for you to listen to yourself? Michael literally... Oh, that's how he's oh, going to make it. it. I, I, I don't mind listening to myself because I'm, it's cool. Because I can fix things, you know? Oh, yeah. That's exactly how I feel. I sang a G there at the end. You can, you can barely hear it, but I lock into the G. Sorry, I, 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 wasn't, I was watching the basketball. You should listen. You can barely hear it. I swear I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'd have heard it in the hall. <laughs> I well, appreciate you having me. Hey, that. what's your favorite thing about listening to Christian Van Horn? It's like a chef looking at his meal and and being satisfied. You know, it didn't mm -hmm. it didn't take him two hours to make that meal. Yeah. It took him twenty years to be able to make that mm -hmm. two hour meal. And so mm -hmm. and so it, if I listen to that because the first time I ever sang Mephistopheles was at Yale in two thousand one, and this is two thousand and twenty one. So you're yeah. talking about twenty years of this same role, and you go, I know what it sounded like then. Yikes! You know, <laughs> yikes! And, and to do it now and you go, all right, I'm, maybe somebody can do it better than me, but, but uh, I'm at least in that group. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. So you go, you go uh, I'm, I'm the guy who should be doing this. That, that's without, without trying to sound like you got some humongous ego, you're like, no, yeah. I'm, I'm the guy to do this. That was right. Do you, being in that box of the elite few, does that give you a lot of confidence? Like to does know it give you confidence? That? Fuck yeah, it does. Yeah. Absolutely. But I, it took me a minute to realize that I would... You know, for forever I felt like I was the newcomer. Yeah. The young guy, the young guy, the young guy. And then all of a sudden I was an elder statesman. And elder statesman seemed to happen overnight. Yeah. And I go, when, when did just, I... Yeah. And then some kid walks up to you and calls you maestro. And you go, what? Yeah. Was he behind me? You know, and you yeah. go... Yeah, where is he? And so, I don't know that I'm in the elite group. I think I'm just in the group that's still here. Mm -hmm. Like, we survived 20 years and we're still here. You don't, yeah. I don't think you make 20 years without being a part of that bigger group, you know, that, that smaller group. Well, it, it's funny because I guess I guess the elite group is just a big group of people that get smaller, smaller as you go yeah. further. I think it's just a matter it's, of staying here. You yeah, automatically get power. thrown into that. Yeah. Sort of group. But, yeah. But when I, like we're doing this gala right now and you see the people around you, you go, this is it. This is the group you want yeah. to be a part of. You know? Yeah. Like, and yeah. So, so in my head I go, you better have earned this. You, you better have deserved yeah. this. You know what I mean? And so then yeah. you, you elevate yourself in that moment. It's no longer new guy. Or in the old days, I would sing, and then they they'd open up their books quick. Like, who's this? Who's this? Mm -hmm. And now when I sing, they don't have to look, and they just go, "All right, go ahead." You still got it? No, let's see. Well, let's. <laughs> yeah. We've heard some things. Go ahead. You know, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. You start at a deficit, and the early early ten years, you're like, "Who's this guy?" Yeah. And now it's like, 
Go the, ahead, big, the, go ahead, fancy singer. The book for you was them looking down, and the first book, the first note I sing, they go, "I hear, I see their heads do this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, and I was like, sure. "Oh, I love that feeling." Yeah, it doesn't happen. That's right. I'm not. Yeah, it doesn't happen. I was like, "All right, what else do you bring?" Yeah. <laughs> Great, he's gonna be loud again. Yeah, 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 loud again. <laughs> Show us another trick, Merlin. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, and he's saying some soft whatever. <laughs> and the Lucas diction did a great, great pianissimo. Fine. Great. What else? Yeah, what Asshole. else? Yeah, we expected that. Oh, God. Right? And you always have to be a little better. It's like, what else can you bring? It's like, how many balls can I juggle? I'm Forever, up if I got a review, it was good. Yeah. If my name was printed, it was positive. For 15 years, because my roles were not mentioned. And so I was like surprisingly good for the size of the role. Yes. And yes, then you and start yes. singing monster roles where they can compare you to the like, greats. No, wait a second. And then it was like the first time I heard somebody shit all over what I had done. You're like, <gasps> yeah. This is why Girl people punch. don't read these yes. things. Yes. I am away from my family ten months out of the year. I have sacrificed everything I yeah. could think to sacrifice. You would never say this to my face. How yeah. dare you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> I am six foot five. You would not yeah, say exactly. this to my face. <laughs> oh, man, this has been awesome. This is fun. This is way fun. All right. Hey, man, just thanks for joining me today. This is great. My pleasure. Let's go record a podcast. Let's do it. Yeah.